Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquay of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair behind Zenith College, bringing you matters of faith with graphic online. Today, I would like to caption my, my little sermon, Suffer to Gain. Suffer to Gain? Mm. You know, sometimes there are some painful experiences or there are some painful things that we go through that rather brings gain to us. And my story is captured in Joshua chapter 5 from verse 2 to 9. In the book of Joshua, they were going to the promised land. God had made a promise to Israel. I'm taking you to a land flown with milk and honey. That was a very powerful promise. God, please take me to my land flown with milk and honey. But here's the interesting thing. God said, I am taking you to a land flown with milk and honey. Now, Moses led them through the wilderness. And for 40 years, they were wandering in the wilderness. And nothing happened. Then they crossed the Jordan. And just after the Jordan was Canaan, the promised land. Just after Jordan was the, the, what God had promised, the land flowing with milk and honey. In fact, the testimony of the people who went to spy the land, they said this is a land with great big grapes. I mean, giant grapes. And the people there too are giant. That means everything grows there. But in Joshua chapter 5, verse 2 to 9, God gave Joshua a very curious instruction. And I said to God, you don't mean it. Now, guess what God said? He said, now you take all the men and take a knife and circumcise them. I mean, I don't want to give you ideas, but that's how the Bible calls it. And that's what the fact of it. God said, circumcise them. That man, now mind you, all those who left Egypt, were not allowed into the promised land. So those who had grown in the wilderness, that is 40 years and below, were asked to be circumcised. Now that is, that is a very painful uh, thing. I mean, grown-ups. So you can imagine one long line, what we normally say, one logo, logo line, one long line of people. And then Joshua gleefully taking a knife and cutting everybody. I mean, just go around and just cutting people, man. And for me, I mean, let me go a little bit more graphic for you. I mean, the person says, so how is this? You're asking me, you to go and taste it. And you get it. Painful, painful process. Now I'm asking God, why would you do that? Then I realized something. Ah, in fact, reading that story, I was angry with God. I said, this is a very mean thing to do. You shouldn't do, be doing that thing. Men who are mature, men who are old, and inflicting pain upon them. Then I realized something. This is what they say. Those who are not circumcised, you get it, have to take great pain in cleaning up themselves. Because if not, medically speaking, sometimes under the folds or within the folds, collect debris or collect certain things, debris or debris, I mean, that collects in there. And some of these things can become uh, bacteria or infectious places, you get it. And sometimes, if you're not very careful, if you don't clean up very well, it collects this bacteria, and this bacteria can create cancer. And not just cancer, but you can also infect other people when you have uh, intercourse with those people. So when God said to Joshua, cut away that thing, he was going to cut away something that was going to harm you. Something that has the potential to harm other people or to destroy you or to kill you. Now, Paul made a statement. And Paul said, for our circumcision, it's not the type of circumcision made with the hands of men, but it is a circumcision of the heart. Sometimes there are things in your character. Sometimes there are things in you as a child of God that needs to be cut away. And the cutting away of that thing will be very, very painful. A corrective measure, a painful measure, a rebuke. I, uh, something that shows you, don't do this again. You, and then, and the, the pain will be sharp. The pain of the rebuke will be sharp. But say this to yourself. If I'm allowed to carry this thing into my future, I will enter the promised land, but my promised land is going to be destroyed. 
this is the reason why there are a lot of people who are very good, but they have certain character deformities. And then you, when you trace it, it was because nobody took the knife at a very young age to deal with those things. And they've grown up with this. Some people are adults, but they are petulant. When there's an issue, they go into petulance. Nobody can correct them. And this, they've grown with it. It has become a monster that is eating them and destroying them. You see musicians, certain character traits that right in the formative years of your Christian life, nobody really dealt with it. And if it's not dealt with, you would grow up with it. In the end, it will destroy you. This is the challenge. God said to Joshua, take a knife and cut it. Now, it is the father's responsibility. It's the responsibility of somebody who speaks into your life to take a knife and cut away that thing. It may be painful, but he has to do it. And he has to do it joyously. He has to do it with happiness. It is painful. There are certain things that, boy, my mom, they spunk me. And, you know, I don't, you know, with child abuse and all those things. Ah, well, for me, spare the rod and spoil the child. But there are certain things that growing up as a young man or growing up as a kid, my dad and my mom placed the line down and said, you can't cross this line. And for me, till today, there are certain lines I won't cross. Not because my dad and my mom hated me, but because they were speaking into my future. So for the moment, chastisement may be painful. But you know what? You suffer it to gain something in the future. So guess what? It's the responsibility of your pastor. It's the responsibility of somebody who is above you, who speaks into your life to bring correction. It is the responsibility of your father or your mother to bring correction to you. Because the Bible says correction is grievous to a fool. You get it? Unless you're a fool, that is when correction becomes grievous. But for the moment, suffer to gain. The reason being that God is taking you somewhere. And if these things are not dealt with now, you will grow up with it. And in the end, it will destroy you. Deal with it now. So for the moment, take the knife. Take the corrective measure. Many a young man's ministry has been destroyed. Many people that you know who could have gone far, who could have really, really, really f uh, flown like eagles, you get it? They ended up like sparrows. Not because of anything, but because they never suffered a little to gain. For the moment, it may be painful, but the fruit it brings forth later on may be something that you would celebrate and other people too will celebrate you for it. So you know what? Somebody needs to take a knife. Say Ajay, but be smiling. My mom summarizes it this way. As kids, sometimes when you do something and you're a kid and you're crying, you'll be told that, hey, here, when you're disciplined, you don't cry. So I remember a cousin who came to live with us, I mean, did something, they spanked her, and then she was crying. Then my mom looked at her and said, hey, here, when we spank you, you don't cry. You, you laugh, you smile. They say, yo, <laughs> auntie, oh, fine, I'm more. <laughs> auntie, please, I'm laughing. The tears were flowing, but here, that will make you somebody good. That will make you somebody worthwhile, somebody that people will celebrate. Not an obnoxious person, something in your character that doesn't sit well, because nobody has really been able to take a knife. So, head pastor, take a knife. Bishops, take a knife. Young folks, come in, allow the knife to be placed. It will save you. It will make you enjoy your promised land without the cancer that will destroy you. God bless you. Suffer to gain. See you next time.